Hiya, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Rosie Henshaw. If you're new here, then welcome. It's lovely to meet you. And if you're already existing, guys, then thank you so much for coming back. I really do appreciate it. Grab yourself a nice cup of tea and some snacks, and let's get into today's video. I've got a water in a mug because I'm very rock and roll like that. Fancy some water. <laughs> and yeah, there you go. I've got stuff in my sink. This is not an Ed and Grace video. This is Rosie had 10 minutes to herself. I'm going to be making these. Why not share it with you guys? All right, let's get in. So I have been seeing in the supermarkets lots of these giant pumpkin cushions. And yes, they are beautiful. Yes, they are gorgeous. However, sometimes they're in colour schemes that doesn't fit to everyone's house colour scheme. Also as well, sometimes they're like 15, 16, 20 quid upwards. And I'm just here to show you that with a few things that you probably already have lying around your house or super, super cheaply, you can make lovely big cushions that are pumpkins for basically peanuts at home. So I will be linking below in the description box. I've done a video about four years ago, I think it was, showing you how to do hand knitted, not hand knitted, not the knitting, but like the DIY pumpkins, fabric pumpkins. I will link that below because that has a little bit of stitching in it. I mean, minute amount of stitching, like anyone could do it. But this is a no sew one today. So this is no sew. All you're gonna need is some fabric, which we'll get onto in a minute. Some scissors, any scissors, you don't need fancy scissors. I've just got some fabric scissors, but you don't need fabric scissors. You could use nail scissors. As long as it's gonna cut through the fabric, it's fine. Some string, twine or jute. I use this jute, I think it looks quite rustic. It's really hard wearing as well if it's gonna be moved about. And you get this for a pound in the pound shop in the garden section. And this has lasted me for years. I think this is the original jute that I used on, no it wasn't. This is the second roll of jute I've had in a lifetime. <laughs> it lasts ages. Um, and then a glue gun or some glue. So I've got my glue gun, I'll plug it in in a second. And then what you are gonna need is some stuffing. Now, you can go to a charity shop, they always have second-hand cushions in there, or teddy bears, or, you know, anything that you want to do, pillows, you can use that stuffing from. I'm sure someone has an old pillow knocking about. I always end up having spare old pillows and stuff, and I just save them in my craft room. It sounds really silly, but you use them for stuffing rather than buying the stuffing. So, fabric-wise, slow down because I'm getting a bit excited. So, fabric-wise, you can use jumpers, you can use socks, you can literally use anything you want. Socks is quite a good one because you can get really cheap fluffy socks in places like the Pound Shop, Primark, you can get really nice cream fluffy ones and make smaller pumpkins. However, I am going to recommend for your cushions a larger bit of fabric. Now, I went to the charity shop and I've got a local char charity shop to me that does every item for a pound. So I picked up, nothing wrong with it really, not my taste this blouse, but I absolutely loved the brown sort of like check material. I mean, it's very country. Pay the pound for it. And look at that big, massive section of fabric that we can use. And then I also got this sort of peachy, orangey knit jumper that was originally a boho one, boohoo, knit dress, also for a pound. So we're gonna have a knit version, and we're also gonna have this. Now, obviously, chuck these through the wash first if you want to, if you're using them as a cushion thing because it'd be a bit hard to wash them after in case they go lumpy um, but i'm going to start off i've even <laughs> i've been collecting cardboard boxes because i've got another craft coming up um where i use boxes so i've got my nappy box nappy white box and i've got this here so you can actually see a bit better because i find when it's too low you all you see is this hello it's a bit distracting so you can see me and also do this so I'm probably gonna use as much fabric as i can it isn't a perfect science i'm just going big or go home with this. So I'm gonna cut the back section off. So we've got the whole back section of this material. This is such a good idea. Like, I mean, to be honest with you, sometimes you can go on Vinted and get a really nice pattern dress for a couple of quid. You know, you can get, there are loads of things. You could use napkins, tea towels. You could also use, sorry, I'm in the moment now old tablecloths, old cushion covers, old pillar slips. I mean, to be honest with you, if you're going for a colour scheme, you know they do pillowcases, normally in like Primark or Asda, Asda's a really good place to go. They do like two pillowcases for like two pound. And that you can honestly go to town with this. You could even get white fabric, white pillar slips for this 
and use a bit of fabric paint to style them up or dye them yourself. Um, so I'm using this big piece. I'm going to save all this for some smaller ones, the front section. The sleeves are half sewn already, so I could use them as like the little knitted ones. But I've got a piece of fabric roughly about this big. I'll be honest with you, if it weren't for the fact that I was on the camera, I probably would have done a bit better at cutting it out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little hole in my cushion just to get some fab uh, some filling. Now, because this is sort of moulded to like a rectangle already, we're going to separate it a bit and make it nice and fluffy because we want our pumpkins to be nice and big. So separate these all up. Nice big sections and just put it on the inside in the centre of your cushion. We want enough in there that it's going to be tight, but it's also not going to be sagging in areas and not too overstuffed either. You want it to be comfortable. I'm just going to start peeling this up to the sides. And you'll start to get a rough idea of when you've got enough. So this is going to be this size. I mean, the, the knitted one is the one that we're going in for a cushion. This is more of a display no so. I would say we've got a bit more room in there. So in the little gap, the hole that we've not pulled up, I'm just going to stuff some more in there and make it really nice and filled. This is a really good idea as well for friends to get together to make. Once you start getting like that sort of padding, that's when you know you're hashtag winning. Last little bit. And then pull this up together. All right, so I'm gonna pull it a little bit neater, making nice little folds as we pull it up. Now we know roughly how much stuffing we need. Just start folding it in your hand like so. Making sure that box is very annoying, isn't it? The noise keeps slipping around. Pull it in it together. And then the last little piece that we shoved in for there. So at this point, if you haven't got the hand manoeuvres, because I know sometimes I get messages from people that, you know, have arthritis or certain things and they struggle with pulling things tight. Um, you could use an elastic band on this rather than having to try and keep the tension in this as well as trying to do the string. Um, what might be also an easy idea is if you get your string ready, I'll show you, get your string ready and possibly tie a loop in it to start. So you've got a loop like so. You can then just pop it over. Just wanna keep the loop together. And then pull it and it will tie it up. So I'm gonna just tie this together, tie it nice and tight. I'm gonna go around this a few times to make sure that it's nice and tight. I prefer to do the sewing ones because I feel like you can get like a more of a bubbled edge at the bottom but you're still gonna get this with the string. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna mimic that. So tie it really, really nice and tight. That is having a bark, it's probably the postman now. <laughs> right, a few double knots and we are done. And then I'm just gonna trim this bit to about that length there so I can tuck this in because if it's keep it trimmed, it might come undone with a little bit of pressure. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off a really large piece of twine. Now, you probably might not have to cut it off at first. I suppose you could keep this going, but it might get a bit confusing. So I'm just gonna cut mine. I know some people say waste not, want not, but it's a little bit of string. I'm gonna be all right. I'm gonna tie this around the top few double knots again. And like I say, you could keep that other end attached to the, the ball of the yarn, but got the jute, keep it on, but I'm not going to. So now what we're gonna do is I am gonna trim this in a sec. I'm not gonna do that now, I would normally, because it gets in the way a little bit. I'm gonna bring the string round and wrap it really nice and tightly around the other side. I'm gonna use my little annoying box now to show you. So I'm gonna do one side 
than the other. Bring it round the stem and then do another section to create sections like that. See where I'm going with this? Press it down and then when you bring it over, it'll be in the right section that you need. Let's go with you can always I almost not done it right right <laughs> right the strings meant to be there then we come over to here then we go over to this because there's a few natural but twist it round first so it doesn't unwind that's where I went wrong then come back round come up the other way Twist it round and then the last section. Trust me guys, this is gonna look really nice. Might have to have a little faff about with some of the sections. Sometimes it gets a bit, you'll be able to see on the bottom actually. Like that. Actually see where the sections are. And then I'm just gonna wrap this round, just pull it as tight as you can. Wrap it round a few times. And then I'm gonna knot it. It's hard to show you this without getting a bit cackand on the camera. But pull it through and knot it. And then what you can do to make sure it's extra secure is one of the little threads that we had on there. We haven't lost it and then it's there. From the original tie we could also tie it to that which i'm gonna do so you can see you're just gonna tie it to that and then what i'm gonna do is is i'm just gonna go in and just rearrange these a little tiny bit to make sure that they're all the same sections make sure there's enough stuff in each of them and if they get a bit wrinkly <laughs> this isn't anti-aging for boobies by the way guys if you're look if you're not watching this and you're just listening Right, what we'll then do is we'll just sort of like pull the wrinkles towards the top, if that makes sense, because then we can just tuck them in a bit more. Tuck them into the fabric. And then what I find helps make them really nice is by squishing them down nice and tightly. This one's got a bit more oh, because of the fabric. This is why it's crucial to make sure it's nice and tight. Right, now what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna trim a little bit of this fabric off. Now I wanna make sure I've got enough for a stem, which is roughly about that thick, I'd say. So I'm gonna trim off this much. And then what I'm gonna do is with this part, I'm just gonna make sure that I wrap it all around to get all the little bits tucked in. And it'll be like that. So what I'm gonna do is now is with a string, I'm just gonna wrap this as tight as I can all the way around that bit of material. Once you start, it will start to look really nice, trust me. So we're gonna make sure we go all the way around. And this is a bit of a process in itself, just making sure it's all covered. But it will start to look really nice as you get to the top. Now, I'm going to tie on another piece of yarn. This is what would work out probably really well if you were to leave it onto the, the yarn or the jute reel. But as I say, I'd rather do it that way because it's less tricky when you're trying to wrap it up, you get less tangled in it. So I'm just gonna wrap this part, but don't do it in a knot together, just to make that little bit of yarn longer. By all means, just add another bit to the base of it, tie it in a knot and then go all the way around. But I just think joining it to be continuous like that, then you can just tuck them bits in. So then go round. It's a bit um, tricky if you're holding the yarn or jute ball as well. 
personal preference, obviously, you might find it really simple. I just don't. <laughs> Making sure that it's nice and thick at the bottom. And the reason being is, is because so it looks thicker at the bottom and then smaller at the top as it graduates up. Because there's not a lot more material up there. So. And then once you sort of like do the bottom part, it will naturally just start to become a lot easier. Making sure that you're pulling it nice and tight making sure to cover up any fabric as you come up. I'm probably gonna make my stem about that long. Maybe even a little bit less than that. And this is where the hot glue comes in, guys. So I'm gonna glue this little bit down And I'm just going to finish up the last piece. Making sure to go all the way. Now I'm going to make sure mine goes off to the side slightly, so keep that bending. I would suggest using a little bit of glue as you go along to keep the um, whatever product you're using, John, um, John or you, <laughs> yarn or you, in place, and just go a bit slower so you don't pull it off the glue. Let it set for a bit. And then I'm just going to trim off that last excess. And we're just going to go over the end. And I'm just going to keep a little bit like that. Put a little bit of glue. On the end there. Just to weave that little bit around. A little bit fiddly. Make sure your fingers on the hot glue. Wait for it to sort of cool a little bit as it's starting to set before you press onto it. I've just got asbestos hands, honestly. My hands are just fine at this point. And then once it's a bit cooler like that, press it down. And I'm just going to rearrange my pumpkin a bit more because it got a bit fluffy in the making. Push all the fluffy out. Making sure they're more even. Obviously, if I was sitting here, I'd take a little bit longer, a bit more pride doing this. I'd take a bit more time, but I want to get in and show you something else. I don't want it to be ridiculously long, this video. So, showing you that you can make no-sew fabric pumpkins once that's a bit more even, as I say. I'm probably going to say I understuff that as well. I'm probably going to say I would have stuffed that a bit more, but how cute does that look? Nice little pumpkin. And then once it's all set, you can twist them a bit and make them a bit more really, really cute. Now we're going to get in and I'm going to do the large knitted pumpkin. I'm going to do the large knitted pumpkin, guys. So I am going to cut the sleeves off this. And the sleeves, like the video I'm going to show you, like I'm linking into the description box below, sleeves are perfect for pumpkins. Tiny bit of sewing just along the end. Like a running stitch is very, very simple. I'm also gonna, so I'm gonna save the sleeves. Put them to one side, so I'm gonna do little variants, do some smaller ones. So we've now got this tunic. Now I'm actually gonna double layer this up so it's super squishy. I know that that's personal choice. What's the better side, less bubbly? This one. So I could use this as this and actually go in, do you know what, let's just do it. Let's just make a giant one. So I'm gonna inside out the fabric, I'm gonna use the whole tunic of it. Now, if you are just using just normal fabric, just use a very large piece, which would be the equivalent 
of that times two. So obviously we've got the front and the back. So by the time it's opened, we've got this huge piece of fabric. So I'm going to, with a bit of jute twine, I'm gonna wrap up the arm section. I know what you're thinking. Why, Rosie? <laughs> Why are you doing stuff that you don't need to do? I mean, you could even use, I wonder if I've got a hairband. You could even use a hairband. Oh, do you know what? No, I'm not, because I'm lazy. They're upstairs. Um, you could even use a hairband. Right, I'm sorry, guys, if this is triggering for the arm of Alexa. Alexa, what's the time? The time is 2.08 p.m. That's fine. I'm just keeping track of the time. I've got to pick the kids up from school. <laughs> um, right. Keep double tying that up. Make sure this is super, super tight. You can use an elastic band for this if you want, but I would make sure whatever you're doing is super... Super, super, super tight. Right. We've got that on the go. Now, I'm going to trim a little bit of the mass off of this. Like so. It's like a huge giant bubble hat. Then I'm going to inside it back. So you've got a little section that looks like that. So this is going to be huge. Now what I'm going to do, now, I mean, you could sew that to make sure it's together. I'm just going to put one more bit around it because I'm really cautious like this. You could even glue it. Do what you need to do to make sure that this doesn't come unraveled. Cable tight if you have to. <laughs> I probably wouldn't recommend that because you'll have something hard inside of it. So use something soft. Right. Sorry, guys. You're probably thinking, Rosie, half of this video is you making sure that it's prepared. I've got four children, guys. I can't have something out that I say is a cushion that cannot be thrown around like a football, snuggled to an inch of its life, without making sure that it's not going to fall apart. Because who do you think is going to be sewing it up when the kids, well, Albert cries? It no longer does its purpose. Right, so now I'm gonna put this on here and I am going to stuff, 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 stuff. You're gonna need a lot, a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I was uh, still a black bin for a minute. You're gonna need a lot of stuffing for this. A lot of stuffing. I'm actually gonna inside out that. Make it nice, pull it all apart. Lots and lots of stuffing. I'm gonna be covered in stuffing on the school run. Just shove it in. <laughs> Now that very very annoying box. Let's push it down to the bottom. Let's spread it out, rip it apart inside to make sure there's no bubbles. Oh, this is going to be giant. <laughs> oh, this is going to be massive. That's the bottom, but you're obviously not going to see that anyway. Now this has got to be super tight, so push the stuffing down and pull this up. Push and pull. Really want to do this nice and tight as I physically, physically can now. By all means, if you've got another pillar, stuff this. You could have giant, giant cushions, like giant, giant cushions. Do you know what? I don't know whether to get a hairband to secure this. It needs to be really tight. I'm going to get a hairband, guys. I am going to get a hairband. No, I'm not. My hairband is snapped. I've got a hairband down here. Do you know what? Normally, there's hairbands Sorry guys, I don't blame you if you wanted to forward that section. <laughs> right, I've got a few little hair bands. I didn't have any thicker ones, so I'm gonna use a few at once to really build that tension. 
pull it through. <laughs> And again. It's just so big. <laughs> I didn't want to. Right. I mean, all by all means, you could um, use this extra bit of material for another pumpkin. It's about half of it there. But I am going to lob a big section of it off again. Because as I say, you don't actually need all of that but I could make another little pumpkin out of this but if you want to and you're using a jumper just get another pillar that's the only pillar I've got now to stuff so I need to use what I've got so let's bring this over to the centre making sure we're nice and even you know with something like this <laughs> very pretty little coral reef there's like a little coral reef on top of it oh on top of it and then we're going to do the same thing with a string Tie it up. Don't need to be so tight with this now, but I'm going to go around a few times just to make sure that the, the knitting is, when I weave it round, it's the same. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? That's it. Double knot it. Keep that to the side. Now it's a bigger one. I might keep it on the spindle. Right. Bring it round really tight to the opposite side. This might even get banned off of Insta um, YouTube because it looks very rude. <laughs> Hello. I like big butts and I cannot lie. And then I'm gonna twist it around and then I'm gonna knot it every time to this leftover piece. Really wanna make sure this is so secure. Imagine this in a forest green colour. And then I'm going to come over straight, straight. Squishing it nice and tight. Wrapping it around the stem, you'll start to get a bit of emotion with it. Where's my little string that it was attached to? Tie them up together. Just stops them from moving. And then we're gonna do the then we're gonna do the thingy section, so these ones. So I'm gonna go in between them both. Around that other side. I'm starting to think this weren't the right colour <laughs> to get. It's me really like do you know what? It's going to look really cute. It didn't factor in. It's going to look like a giant butt. <laughs> oh my God. I love your butt cushion. So nice. Oh no. Gary is going to come in. He's going to be like, Rosie, why have we got an arse cushion? Um, right. And then the last, the last one. But do you know what? You will make it with whatever colour <laughs> you choose. And it will look absolutely gorgeous. I'm sure of it. And it may not look as much of an ass cushion as mine. And you'll be really proud of your creation. And you can be like, I made this. I didn't buy it in the shop. I made it by myself. And you'll feel proud of yourself for it. And no one else will have what you've bought. And I've seen a lot on the high street in lovely Czech materials and stuff like that. And to be completely honest with you, it'd be far cheaper to make your own. So it's good that you can do it yourself if you are that way inclined, because you know what? We're not talking about small businesses, we're talking about big shopping chains. And do you know what? It ain't like you're, the small business is missing out. It's just big chains, so why not make it yourself and it'd be cheaper? So we've got the most perfect pumpkin shape. It's just lovely. Aww. And then we're gonna go around and do our little stem hack, but this time I'm going to just chop a bit of the material that's on the inside so I can wrap this round neatly so it doesn't go fray. So I'm just going to chop some big chunks off the side of this. The only thing that's 
weird is I used to get people say, oh, Rosie, I wish you'd make crafts again on your channel. And I wouldn't really get the time. And I'd sort of do it in the evenings once Albert would go to bed. And I've got so used to crafting by myself that actually I find it weird not listening to music. Like, what is everyone's jams when they're doing things like crafting and stuff? Because mine is Motan. I'm absolutely obsessed with Motan. That is my jam. I'm going to glue a little bit of that fabric just to stop it from fraying. Hold that nice and tight around there and let it set for a second. And then go around with both pieces of string and start to weave it round. See, I'm getting all glue on my fingers. Told you I was asbestos hands. <laughs> so this one, I'm gonna hold this like this, like so, and I'm just gonna weave it really nice and tight, making sure the tension, making sure that it goes really close to the base as well. You don't see any of them hair burns or that not in. Turning it round every so often just to make sure that you've got all the areas, because sometimes you might miss a bit around one side. And then what I'm gonna do, go round and mimic to get it all in place. Do you know how tight we've got to go round? And then every so often, because it's a thicker stem, I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of glue, like just a little line, just so that as it wraps around it, it sticks. And at this point, you could literally just spin this round and weave it on. When you go round and you get in the areas, try and make sure that when you're getting the areas, you're not overbuilding it up in certain places so that it isn't just making the stem super, super, super thick. Try and cover as much fabric as you can with less amount of twists, if that makes sense. Go around. It is basically cool now anyway, it's just a bit sticky still. Like I did with the other pumpkin. Manipulate it a little bit. To make it thinner. It's starting to look really lovely. Got a little bit of glue there. Let's come off to dry glue. When I do my um, hand stitch one, which you'll see in the, not hand stitch, but you know what I mean, the little bit of stitching. In that video, I'll show you how to make stems individually so you don't actually have to do all this. You can just make your individual stems and you can just glue them in after. That is actually much easier to do that. I'm just showing you that if you do want to do it this way, it is also an option. And then we've got the last bit, which is always the last bit. I remember once I made a reef on here. I think it was a spring reef one year. And I used a car steering wheel cover from the pound shop. We worked out about three quid. 
as the base and we covered it in jute because it was quite big, covered it in jute and it took ages. <laughs> and I, I started filming it and my phone ran out of battery and everything. So I was just like, oh, I'll come back on and just show it already done because otherwise it's just too long a video of me wrapping a wreath and I'll show you me adding all the bits and that. And lots of you made it and were like, Rosie, what are you doing to us? We were sat there for about 40 minutes <laughs> covering this reef base. I'm not gonna lie, I admire the dedication, guys, because I know how strenuous that actually was, but you went for it and you've done it. You, no one can take that away from you now. You achieved that. What did that remind me of? Oh, Fred Claus, when they're going on a date and she said about, oh, you made me fresh up on my French. I thought we was going to France. And then you took me somewhere. He's like, yeah, but no one can take that away from you. On Chante, Fred, France is a, French is a part of you now. It made me laugh. A little fluffy bit. A little blue at the end. Shaking, I can't press it out. That way, doing it too quick handedly. There we go. There we go. And um, these bigger ones look like walnut whips. <laughs> the chocolate walnut whip. Am I the only one? They still do walnut whips. Or is that just in my imagination? Let me cut it. If there's any pink bit showing, you can always move the. So, and then once this obviously is fabric underneath, so you can actually manipulate these. So, we have got giant fabric pumpkins, and I mean, you could go even bigger with these. Obviously, I'm doing what I've got for basically nothing. An old cushion, I mean, you can get cushions so, so cheaply. They even sell cushions in the pound shop. I think they're like two quid. Um, a bit of fabric, it's a couple of tea towels out of there. So I'm, I'm standing back because I'm gonna get a thumbnail out of this. <laughs> um, so hopefully you've enjoyed these guys. They're super simple to make. If you have me on Instagram, obviously I need to give these a bit of a dust off because I've got a few bits of the, the material but if you make any of these please let me know tag me in them i'd love to see them but they are super super cute and so easy to make and honestly use colors i mean i might do a forest green one of these try and find a forest green jumper i'm not going to buy one's car off as it doesn't work out very good financially um but i am going to try and be one on the hunt for one and it would just look gorgeous on my sofa and it fits with my decor then and um, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video guys i've been rosie henshaw see you later take care bye